Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Matt Hannah. And this is Horror Hour with the Hannahs. Where we talk about all of your favorite scary movies. And today we have a special feature for Halloween. So we are doing the Zodiac signs as horror movies. Yep, so we just picked a bunch ourselves and we're going to make our case for why certain signs are a certain movie. And we should preface that we know that astro- astrology is silly, but we enjoy it. So. Hey, speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's very goofy, but it's fun. Sometimes they make sense. So we wanted to, but they all have very distinct descriptions. So we thought it'd be easy to try to pick something that, that fits those. A couple of them really, really, really stumped me, actually. So I am excited to kind of see how we might have interpreted them or what movies should be associated with them. I will say neither of us are experts on astrology or anything. So if we describe things incorrectly, uh, blame the various websites. Google. Well, wherever Google took me, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, like the articles that I was trying to read to describe each of the signs in a succinct way is who you can blame if I'm wrong. But it's not me. My research is excellent. It's definitely not you. Yeah, it could never (laughs) be me. I could never make a mistake. So... Just to preface, the Zodiac is a belt-shaped region of the sky that extends approximately 8 degrees north and south of the eclipse, the apparent path of the sun across the celestial sphere over the course of the year. Uh, The Zodiac is divided along the elliptic into 12 equal parts, which are the signs. And in Western astrology, the time of each sign is associated with different attributes. So with each sign, we'll say the sign, we'll say the dates, and we'll talk about the attributes that are associated with them. I didn't know we were going to do a plot summary for uh, astrology. We should have done 15-second summaries. You would not know (laughs) what any of them meant offhand, though. So that's... No, I meant for the whole astrology. I meant like that whole thing that you just read. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, that was like the whole plot summary. I was making a joke about how you described all of the what astrology is. Like, I didn't know where it came from. Oh, okay. That was the joke. I didn't think it was a good joke, okay. so. Welcome to Haunted Atlas, where the Haunted US team uncovers America's most haunted locations and their hidden histories. From ghostly encounters in haunted hotels, spine-tingling legends from chilling mansions, and dark corners of abandoned towns, each episode takes you deeper into the unexplained. Find new episodes of Haunted Atlas every two weeks, starting Halloween 2024 wherever you get podcasts. Well, we're going to start with Aries. That is March 21st to April 19th. Aries is known for having an explosive temper. They're bold pioneers, leaders, and innovators. They are brave and confident. They could also be described as vibrant and energetic in nature. So Matt, why don't you start us off? What movie did you say for Aries? I picked, I need to look up the year really quick. I picked Green Room, which came out in 2015. And I I know you've seen this one, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And so the IMDb summary is a punk rock band is forced to fight for survival after witnessing a murder at a neo-Nazi skinhead bar. So why did you feel like this was a good pick for Aries? Um, I mean, I was I was just going off of the descriptions that you gave me, which were the uh, explosive temper, bold pioneers, leaders, initiators, brave and confident, because this movie is about a punk band that already kind of fits some of that, who are a bunch of kids that are overly confident and kind of stupid, but also very big in their beliefs of like, fuck Nazis and decide to play the Dead Kennedy songs, not 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 punks fuck off at the show. And then witness a murder where they basically get held in the green room trying to survive. And they kind of make a lot of bold and brash decisions. And a lot of the times it does not work out for them, but sometimes it does. And I feel like the whole movie is just about the rash decisions that these teenagers, or really, I guess they're adults, continue to make. Um, And so it felt like it fit. Um, Kind of the explosiveness of Aries. Yeah, I would add that the not band member characters like all of the side characters and the nazis and the patrick stewart of it all i think would also fall under explosive temper a lot of them are very very like reactive um and bold but in a less uh fun or okay way so i also said green room wait really yes 
Oh, that's so funny. We picked that separately. Yeah. So I, yeah. That's incredible. I thought Green Room was a very good Aries movie. Whoa. Did you know I picked that? I figured you would pick that. That's funny. No, I had no idea. All right. Good. So, nice. It's a good movie. Everyone should watch it. So since we're in agreement, we can just move on to the next one. We should one. cover Green Room, though. I'm going to throw that out there. I've been thinking about that. We talked about it in our A24 bracket. That's right. And it won our bracket with, like, no competition in the ring. So we should so, probably cover it. Yeah, it's a great movie. I'm sure there's a lot we can say about it over the course of a full episode. It would be fun to have someone who's not seen it. Mm-hmm. I agree. Because I think this could appeal to a lot of people who aren't necessarily into horror either. I think this one kind of transcends genre a little bit in that way. So it would be fun. Especially I think if we found someone who... Like, is into music and, like, punk. I think this is the perfect movie for your friend that doesn't like when horror protagonists make dumb decisions. Because in this movie, there's always consequences and there's always, like, a reason that dumb decisions are made. And there are times where good decisions are made. And I think the decisions that are made, like, I cannot understand where they're coming from with a lot of their decisions. Okay, well, what did you have for the next one? So, our next sign is Taurus, April 20th to May 20th. Uh, Tauruses are sensual and connected to sensory experiences, stability, reliability, and consistency. And what a Taurus perceives as dedication is often regarded by others as stubbornness. While their steady consistency is one of their greatest strengths, it can also make them inflexible or unyielding. So the movie that I chose for that is 2024's Stop Motion. Okay. Plot summary is a stop motion animator struggles to control her demons after the loss of her overbearing mother. Um, We have a full episode on this movie, so I know a lot of people haven't seen it, so I definitely recommend checking out our full episode. It has some spoiler-free content, I believe. Um, And I really saw our main character as having a lot of Taurus energy. Um, she's really connected to like the sensory, like she is a stop motion animator and part of it is she's picking different like materials that like feel a certain way or evoke a certain emotion. Like the whole point of her project is really like evoking emotion and the whole movie evokes a lot of like weird or uncomfortable emotions. And she is very so dedicated to this project of hers that she starts, you know, going down the rabbit hill of Uh, grief and mental illness and trauma um i'm not gonna say it's my favorite movie but i think that her overall stubbornness to like finish this project and express herself and her emotions through this project feel very taurus to me based off the description of taurus well yeah i don't have anything to add do you like that pick yeah i think think? it's a good pick Okay, I don't like that movie that much. So I kind of feel like it went, that movie like went out of my brain pretty quickly. But. What did you pick? I picked The Sixth Sense. Okay. Which I feel like is obvious. Everyone for has Atars. seen it. So why don't you give us the back of the box oh, uh, the summary. Anyway. A child psychologist uh, starts treating a young boy with a disturbing secret. And the <laughs> secret is that he can see dead people. And the other Spoilers. secret is that the psycholo- psychologist is dead. Spoilers! It's Matthew. the sixth sense. I do not care. <laughs> a 25 plus year old movie. Oh my God, it's almost 30 years old. Yeah. It's wild. If you haven't seen it, like honestly, you deserve to have it spoiled. So that's what we have to say about that. So I picked this because of the entire idea of, uh, what is it, uh, the senses, which I feel like was big in Taurus. Mm-hmm. That was like the, the big thing I took away is that they're uh, very much about like connected to sensory things. And so I was like, well, you got to go with the sixth sense for this one. It's in the name. Right. Having so an extra let me, I need to, I need to look at your descriptions again so people. I can remember. Um, yes. Yeah, so sensory experience is the big one. And then I also thought the stability, reliability and consistency made sense because that's kind of what, um, Cole is the main character needs in his life after, you know, father is not around or dead. Mom is busy and that's what he ends up getting from Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis's character who also is looking for that kind of stability in okay. accepting his death. Uh, and being able to move on at the end. So I find that both of them are in need of that and they're able to find that in each other, which is why I picked Taurus for this one. Okay. It just fell right. I can dig with that. So, I can dig it. Yeah. So I need to oh, I need to be refreshed on what all of them are because I picked them a couple days ago. But Well, that's why I'm reading them. I just don't. I, I will don't also say that the inflexible answers. and unyielding is also very funny because 
that's Bruce Willis's character is inflexible, unwilling to accept the fact that he He's is dead. dead. <laughs> and Cole helps him come to that, yeah. that conclusion. So that's why I got that one. I kind of like that answer. Yeah, it was good. I'm sorry. I, I stuttered a little or stumbled because I was like, wait, what is Taurus again? How do I make sure I use your description? To, you can pull up the notes, you know, so you I, don't um, that's just what I stare at mine. For. Okay. Sure. Well, that's it for me on that one. So hit us with our next one. Unless you want to say something about it. I was trying to decide if I liked your answer or my answer better. Well, the, the users out there can decide. Twitter, TikTok can decide or our listeners can decide. Also, we should encourage everybody to comment. Tell us what you think, what we disagree with, agree with. Yeah, you know your sign better than we're going to know your sign. Yep. So tell I don't know us anything other think. than what Hannah and I are. So I know a couple. Like my mom's an Aries, so that mm. is pretty easy for me. I see Green Room for such her. An Aries I could totally dude. see her That's being crazy. in the band in Green Room. Well, I also, for one of the signs, I was really confused by it. So I messaged someone that I knew was that sign. And I was like, SOS, describe your sign to me, please. <laughs> I'm being really stupid. All right. So well, hit us with your next one. Next up is Gemini, May 21st to June 21st. Geminis are playful and intellectually curious. They're constantly juggling a variety of passions, hobbies, careers, and friends groups. Geminis express emotions externally, they're spontaneous, unpredictable, and they're known for their dual nature. That's why Gemini is the twins. So a lot of people will describe like a two-faced person. Or Gemini is being two-faced. So that's their like negative stereotype. So what did you pick for Gemini? I picked 1996's, is that the year? Yep, uh, Scream. Uh, and I think for obvious reasons, but let's give us the, the plot summary is a year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a mass killer who targets her and her friends by using scary movies as part of a deadly game. Mm -hmm. And that is our plot description. So pull up, uh, I, need, I need to see the description of Gemini again. But spoilers... There are two killers in the movie, and that's a big... It's like a whodunit. It ends up being Matthew Lillard, and I forget the other guy's name. Um, Ehrlich. Something Ehrlich. Yeah, I don't know who plays Billy. Um, and so that was where I was like, all right, well, Gemini, we got two killers with two personalities pretending to be one. So that's part of it. I also think you have basically Billy, who is playing... Is Sydney's boyfriend, and also the one trying to kill her and her friends, who is very clearly unwell and is living these dual lives. So for me, that's where I got uh, Gemini from. So what about you? Um, I also thought the spontaneous and unpredictable felt very fitting, especially for Matthew Lillard's character, whose name? Uh, Stu. Stu. Yeah, I knew that. I was getting there. Oh, I was like, one of my favorite movies Well, I literally went um, just quietly because I thought that would sound bad on the mic. But yeah, Stu. Um, is <laughs> extremely spontaneous, unpredictable. Like, I'm just thinking of a lot of his lines, like where he's, my mom's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> like, for some reason, it just feels like very, like, that emotion expressed externally. Like, it, it, it very much is a stew of sorts. Um, and then even Hold if... Hold up. What did you do? Is this the movie you picked? Oh, yeah. I also picked Scream. You never said. <laughs> yeah, I also picked Yeah, we're on the same Scream. page about this one. Um... I feel like this would probably be, I think, where a lot of people would go. I think because, like you said, the dual nature of the killer being not more than one person. And that obviously applies to multiple screen movies, too. I think also when you think All of, of them except for one of the bad ones. Yeah. Three. The worst one. I also... Well... Six isn't six very good. Six wasn't good. But then I think like when you get to that storyline too with her being Billy's daughter, I think that fits really Gemini with this description as well. And he very much is giving a lot of these traits in those later movies and so is she. So yeah, I feel like Scream to me is a good pick for the twins for Gemini. Yeah, I thought it's obvious. So I'm glad I knew we'd have a couple matching ones. Yeah, I don't also, know how many more matching we're going to have. I was very confident that you would say Scream and Green Room. I, that's and funny. The Green that, Room one's I great. Sure. I can't believe we both had that. I also will say that I really want to cover Scream for the pod, but Hannah keeps telling me that it, there's nothing more to say about it. So if you want I us to cover Scream. I just feel like everyone I, has seen it. Everyone knows it. I, and there's nothing we would add to I, the dialogue I, that hasn't been said already. <laughs> I agree with you, but I still want to cover it because it's one of my like top 10 movies of all times. 
So if you want to hear Scream Cover comment, if nobody comments or says it, then we won't do it. Maybe at some point we'll just do like Matt's five favorite horror movies of and Hannah's time. five favorite horror That's movies. That's going to be hard. Or like I'll five favorites that we haven't discussed okay, on the pod okay, maybe because that. my favorites have already been discussed on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> What's up with that? Okay. Because uh, I plan the schedule. So that's... Well, <laughs> get, let's go to the next one. Okay. Scream is definitely Gemini, though. Uh, next is Cancer. I feel very, very, very good about my answer, so I'm going to go first. But Cancer is June 22nd through July 22nd. I am a Cancer. I was supposed to be a Leo, but I'm a Cancer. Um, cancers are highly sensitive to their environment and extremely self-protective. They're gentle, compassionate, uh, loyal, committed, and they have a lot of emotional depth. These crustaceans, because cancer is crab, make excellent hosts and enjoy entertaining with comfort food and free-flowing free libations. I don't know if that's really relevant to this, but um, it, it was me, so I wanted to include it because I am such a host. Remind me to talk about our Halloween party. Um, and also passive-aggressive because same. Uh, so for this, I picked Midsummer. Directed by Ari Aster, released 2019. Back of the box summary. A couple travels to Northern Europe to visit a rural hometown's faded, fabled Swedish midsummer festival. What begins as an idyllic retreat quickly devolves into an increasingly violent and bizarre competition at the hands of a pagan cult. Um, so I have to say, I absolutely love this pick and completely agree with you. It's not the one I picked. Because I came Cause up I with this allowed. whole concept of this video because I wanted to talk about Midsummer as cancer. So when he I was like, else. I put Midsummer as cancer, I was like, no, you did not. That's the only one we knew that we had in common because I made him change it because I knew he would copy well, okay, of me. Okay, but tell me about anyway. Midsummer and I'm going to add on to it. And then <laughs> um, well, I think Danny very much is a cancer that is our main character, F Florence Pugh. I think like... She, I mean, she's highly sensitive um, and like, I think that's a good thing. She's like very in tune with her emotions and how she's feeling throughout the film. Um, and I think that's very core to the cult in Midsummer. is they're very um, in touch with each other's emotions, like this concept of radical empathy. We talk about that um, in our Midsummer episode since we've already covered this. Um, but. Uh, for example, when she's like sobbing and all of the girls are around her, like sobbing and screaming with her and like heaving with her, like holding her as she's feeling all these emotions that just like because of how sensitive and empathetic, like all of that really compassionate they are towards her, but also her um, being in tune to her emotions and environment, too. That just felt very, very cancer to me. Um She's also extremely loyal and committed in this regard. It's not good because her partner is not loyal and committed to her. Um, but I think that's a trait that she shows throughout the movie by being committed to this person. Who and that's also like why they're not good for each other is because she wants a different commitment than what he wants. Well, he also is just like a bunghole. So there's a lot of what well, makes them not a good say match. That. I would say that he's... Doesn't want to be in a relationship with her, but because of a tragic event happening to well, her, I think feels that, that he stays, which a is a bad hole. idea. Yeah, he shouldn't do that. I agree. Yeah, but I think he's a butthole with how he treats her you, when she's going through a tragic loss. He is like so detached from her well, with her being such like an emotional, <laughs> genuine, like compassionate, kind person um, who's feeling a lot the of feelings. The issue is he should have ripped the band aid off though. He was like, he wanted to break up with her and then was like, I can't because she's going, her parents and sister just died. And he probably would have, the, the kinder thing to do would have been to break up with her anyway. Yeah, but then but, he stays so passive. Yes, he's just he's so, so passive, passive yes. about their relationship. Relationship they just have different attachment styles. Oh yeah, he's very um, avoidant. But yeah, tell I, us why you. Oh wait, I want to say something like about. It as oh, a, okay, gotcha. Why I you thought like you were going to kick me on to the next cancer. one. I was going to say, interestingly enough, though, the cult, while they do kind of have this radical empathy, it's very much there to prey upon people that mm -hmm. need that. So like, it's kind of a little bit of a fake empathy. Although I do think they have it. Yeah. It's very much being used. To like it's pull her evil. in, they found her knowing that she needed this thing to be fulfilled, mm -hmm. and brought her into their death cult, basically. Yeah. Um, where I saw, so I think she is more of the cancer, and they're using cancer traits as their identity. But yeah, for evil, they're being cancer for evil. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I would say. Um, in a lot of ways, cancer. In a lot of cancers, evil. do that. Okay. 
Yep. What are you saying about yeah, me and your mother? You could, your mother's uh, oh, a yeah, cancer, cancer too. too. So, so that's Kate, all I he's talking to say. trash on you. Look at him. But, so I can go to mine now since I wasn't allowed to pick Midsummer. What did you I pick? I picked another one that I think would be good. Also, I don't think you've been doing your plot descriptions. I oh. did for that. Oh, I've my bad. I opened all of them and okay. when I'm up first. My bad. My I bad. didn't for Scream or Greamer because oh, we had right, the same right. movie. So my bad. Uh, I picked Carrie. Stephen King's uh, novel and turned movie that came out in 1976, which we also covered. Oh my and God. not that many people listen, so go go listen to it. Um, we covered like almost all of these. I have a couple we haven't covered. Thank let, God bless. Okay, let me give sorry. the uh, plot <laughs> description. Is Carrie White, a shy, friendless teenager girl who is sheltered by her domineering religious mother, unleashes her telekinetic powers after being humiliated by her classmates at her senior prom. That is a weird plot description because that's like the end of the movie. Yeah, it is. Um, but tell but, us why. Okay, I just think it's another thing. You had a telekinetic girl. So I immediately was like, okay, the highly sensitive to environments and self-protective. She, when put in the situation of being made fun of, basically lashes out and kills her entire class. Yeah, like her protectiveness leads to something bad. It's out of her own self-preservation. She almost like loses it. Like it's not like she's in control. Um, I think that as a character, she is very like she's supposed to be kind of compassionate and gentle. Like that is kind of her whole thing. She's the one being picked on. She is the Mm -hmm. one being bullied. That is actually this overly sensitive person. When I use sensitive, I'm also meaning telekinetic. I I kind of feel like those things in film usually go together is the idea of telekinesis or reading thoughts. I know she doesn't have that, but they all kind of, a lot of superpowers like that go together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll go along with the idea of like sensitivity or empathy. Um, so that was why I wanted to go with that one. It really is about the self-protective and I think the the sensitivity that you get from her and gentleness. Sorry. Um, yeah. It felt like a, the, the perfect kind of actually kind of similar to Midsummer in some ways. Although I think that uh, they have very different endings there. Right. The one, one well, of them. Hers. You can even interpret the end as being like that ultimate compassion, ultimate being like sensitive to your environment and to others because she literally we can read it as brings the house down on herself and her mom because she's feeling so much yes. emotion. And I also, it's it's interesting how in the, the the way it's shot is that, I don't know what happens in the book, is that the classmates are not actually laughing at her at the end, but she's in such a self-protective like protective mood, as we said, before, not mood, but self-protective m- feeling that she's seeing them like laugh at her and she can't mm-hmm. like handle that, even though she's been so kind throughout like the whole movie. It all, all comes out at once, so... I liked that one for for cancer. Yeah. Both of them have uh, pretty tragic endings. Midsummer and yeah, they're both very sad. Um, I can vibe with that. I think that's a good answer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna move on to Leo. Leo. I have a really funny one for this, but go ahead. Okay. Leo is July 23rd to August 22nd. Leos are renowned for their stability, loyalty, and consistency. <laughs> They love to watch their mates succeed until they feel threatened. They can become impaired by their ego, pride, and jealousy. When they start to feel their star power will be eclipsed. Um, They're theatrical, dramatic, magnetic, enthusiastic, and they have a strong desire to be admired and appreciated. I want you to to do yours first because mine's going to derail. Oh, no. Mine's not up there. So if you're looking at my screen, it's not up there. Oh, okay. That's so funny. Okay. I picked Jennifer's body. <laughs> that um, one's funny too. <laughs> Jennifer's body what is a, movie. a 2009 movie. A newly possessed high school cheerleader turns into a succubus who specializes in killing her male classmates. But can her best friend put an end to the horror? Um, this one was one of the ones I struggle with a lot. Um, but I just thought that her as a character... She, like, very much is theatrical and dramatic in, like, the ways that she is killing all of these men. Um, But, you know, it is clear that she does feel this need to be admired and appreciated. And, like, that's why I think, I mean, I haven't seen this movie in a while, but I think that's, like, part of the strain that she has with her bestie. Because bestie isn't, like, extremely supportive of the murder spree. Um, I think she very much is impaired by her ego and pride. Um, and when needy, like, kind of like fights back against her, when they, when she feels her star power being eclipsed by her, by needy is when shit derails. Um, but I do think at the center of this for a lot of the film is this like stable friendship, loyal friendship that just like, unfortunately, several murders makes it hard to stay loyal. (laughs) 
I don't know. For me, it just like the vibes felt right for a Leo to me. Having known Leos um, and thinking about the people in my life who are Leo, this just like the vibes were so there. Well, I don't have anything to add for Jennifer's body. So do you want mine? Sure. Yeah. So I latched on to a couple words in this description. Okay. Actually, and they fit. It was stability, loyalty, and consistency were the big ones. And I also, we'll, we'll go into some of the other ones, but I picked uh, the Friday the 13th franchise as a whole because okay. these movies are consistently shit. Oh my God. <laughs> They're very stable. You get, you get one every, uh, for a long time. You were getting one like every other year. You got like uh, 12 of them now. Okay. A ton that came out. All pretty much the same brand of bad, except for like one or two, right? So we're, we're in that, like I said, it's very stable in that way. Uh, I think they're very much inspired by other slashers and they basically tried to ride the high of those without understanding what made them good. But then they basically became the predominant slasher with the amount of movies they had. So I think that fits your whole, uh, if they become feel threatened, they become impaired by their ego, yeah. pride, and jealousy because they start to fear that their power will be eclipsed. So they got to just keep coming out with more stuff and doing weird stuff. They basically do a carry in one of the movies and have him fight carry. It's basically a crossover movie the fuck yeah yeah it, it's it's weird and then i will also say it actually does fit the effortlessly theatric because i mean maybe not in a good way but i mean these are just dramatic and theatric movies people love them right people are drawn into them and then i think the strong desire to be um, admired and appreciated is so clear because everyone that makes one of these is like trying to outdo the last person and usually it doesn't go well <laughs> It's mm-hmm. we need to get to a certain amount of kills. We need to have the grossest kills. We need to do this and that. And so for me, I just felt like the uh, the Friday the 13th franchise as a whole. However, not very stable right now. We haven't seen one since 2008, since the remake. Yeah, so. I was going to say, but I think your point is brought a, down. For <laughs> a long time there, we had 12. It's The reason we haven't seen one is because the next one will be the 13th. And everyone's terrified to make the 13th. Once again, fitting our uh, impaired by Feeling ego and threatened. pride. Yeah. Because everyone's everyone's scared to do it. So. so I know you're talking about like the franchise as a whole, but what about like the characters? And oh, the that's content? not what I was picking it for. Okay, <laughs> that's so why we I was don't derailing. feel like the characters or content are Leo. What care? We just well, I There's haven't not seen them, so I can't really say. That's why I'm asking you. I can't argue. No, that I, I was picking specifically the franchise, and that's why I said I, the energy I was of the franchise. Yes. Okay. Did you even try to think of like no. a specific? You were like, no. "This is funny." I was Here like, "This I is go. so funny." This fits everything a Leo is, is apparently, which is not good for. Well, again, the stability and consistency part was more about the consistency and being bad. That doesn't mean Leos are bad. I'm not equating <laughs> Leos to Friday the Thirteenth. I'm, I'm equating the. Uh, I don't even know if I want to call it gumption, but the yeah, we'll call it the, the gumption of the franchise is is very comparable to a Leo. One of your groupsmen was a Leo, so That's fine. don't go shitting on him. This, again, it has nothing to do with the movies being bad. Jason is the Leo, by uh, the way. And okay. he is so Jennifer's body coded. There's <laughs> something so funny about his energy and that energy. That's kind of why I was like, oh, my God, I love that. That's so good. Well, did did my humor, uh, did, did it work there, even though we're married? I thought that one would make you laugh. I didn't laugh, did I? I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't remember. I thought, I thought you would enjoy my I, uh, I uh, have to be restrained sometimes because I can't let you think that you're funny. <laughs> I think I'm funny. That's all I that know matters. you think you're I funny. That's the laugh. problem is you think you're too funny. So I can't like humor it because I don't want you to get too big of a head on your shoulders, you know? Sure. All right, go ahead. And I don't one. think I'm funny, so you should probably laugh at me more. It would help a lot. Yeah. We have to even each other out. You have serious. to laugh more right. and I have to... Laugh less. Well, say something funny then. <laughs> Do something funny, funny girl. Did you not see my Halloween costume? Was sure, that sure, not sure. funny I'm enough? I'm talking about it on the podcast. I am right. so funny. Go to the next one. Next movie. Okay. Um, our next sign is Virgo, August 23rd to September 22nd. Virgos are logical, practical, and systematic in their approach to life. They're perfectionists at heart and aren't afraid to improve skills through diligent and consistent practice, meticulous in all pursuits, methodical, committed, and hardworking, with an innate ability to notice what others might miss, making them excellent problem solvers and critical thinking thinkers. So I picked Silence of the Lambs. I'll stop you right there. 
I did too. <laughs> and I feel like this one is is easy for many reasons, but I want, I'll want i let you go first and then I can just fill in. Yeah, so a young FBI trainee who's hunting for a serial killer named Buffalo Bill, who skins his female victims, seeks advice of the imprisoned Hannibal Lecter, a brilliant psychiatrist and cannibalistic serial killer. Hannibal Lecter is... Such a prototypical Virgo, in my opinion, um, with a description of being log- logical, practi- practical, systematic, meticulous, methodical, committed. All of those things are so Hannibal Lecter. I need to say something. Um, and in his, with his like descriptions of what he's done, feels so Hannibal Lecter, especially um, to the innate ability to notice what others might miss, making them excellent problem solvers and critical thinkers, because there are pieces of information that no one would have gotten if it weren't for his keen eye, which is why they go to him in the first place, because he is able to notice those things that other people can't miss. And that's why it would also make him a good psychiatrist when he's not eating people. And it's not just him that fits all these descriptions. It's also Clarice. Well, yeah, because yeah, she's, she's the one, the one that who solves, figures it out. Yep. And I think that we've talked about before. We've covered this one, and I think it's a really good episode, so go listen. Uh, but very much we've talked about how by being a woman in this situation and also being good at her job, it allows her to see things from a completely different perspective, which ultimately leads to her being the one that finds and is able to mm-hmm. like kill Buffalo Bill. Mm-hmm. Or kill, I don't know if she kills him or just uh, incapacitates him. But uh, I thought that she fully met it's it's interesting how her and Hannibal Lecter are actually not that different in terms of their, like, Virgo-ness is how I'm going to put it. Well, she also, like, to be at this place in her life, to be a female FBI agent right off the bat, she has to be so committed and hardworking. And we see that through every minute of this film. Like, even when it first starts is her running the trails, like, all by her lonesome. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she's still that- actively, like... In school, like supposed to be doing other things, but is also taking on this additional task because she's asked to and like fighting like hell to succeed. I think he is like the one who I originally was seeing as very Virgo, but I agree. I can see why you would see her as a Virgo, too. That's yeah, that's like I basically looked up and I was like, what are horror movies with detectives? And I was like, oh, yeah. Silence of the Lambs. And I love this movie. 10 out of 10. I like how your thought process was, what is a horror movie with a detective? And my thought process was, ah, this serial killer. (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. (laughs) Yeah. It's both of them. And I feel like that's definitely the point. Yeah. Silence of the Lambs. Very Virgo. I could watch this movie every year and maybe more. I think this is probably one of our most perfect picks on here. Yeah. Like there's no stretch here. I got nothing else to say. So. That's fine. Let's do the next one. We're going to moving on to Libra. I think you might have cheated off me for this one. Did I? Mm-hmm. Oh, I did. We yeah. have the same answer again. <laughs> you definitely cheated off me because I talked about this before, too. Oh, shit. Or do you want to talk first, then? Can I talk first? You can talk first. So Libra is September 23rd to October 23rd. Libra's natural inclination towards justice makes them excellent mediators and friends who are always willing to seek different perspectives. Libra's diplomatic skills and artistic flair allow them to express themselves in ways that resonate deeply with others. This so, is the funniest pick because we both went with Saw. <laughs> Maybe the franchise, maybe the first one, but uh, clearly Jigsaw is the biggest Libra of all time. Yeah, two men awaken to find themselves on the opposite sides of a dead body, each with specific instructions to kill the other or face a consequence. These two are the latest victims of the Jigsaw killer. So I think the easiest way for me to immediately talk about Libra and Saw is that Libra's... uh, What's it called is like the scales yeah. of balance, which I think think of the scales which, of justice, which, which is John Kramer as a T, like everything he says is like is what, or what he believes. He really is not at all. He's yeah. a weighted scale. He's a he's a a, yeah. a cheating I mean, scale. Yeah. However, he sees himself that way and sees himself as this like bringer of justice and, and this his own scale basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was like cracking up when I was reading this. I was like, this is Saul, like one hundred percent. Um, but then to read the rest of it, the diplomatic skills and artistic flair allow them to express flair themselves. Artistic flair me the fuck up. That's Thinking every trap. Thinking about it <laughs> as John Kramer because every trap is just so creative. How could one think of that if they weren't, if they didn't have such a flair? If only escape rooms <laughs> existed before the Saw movies, John Kramer could have made a killing. He'd have been oh. so good. They basically, I guess Cube did too, but Saw really created the escape room. And then we got an escape room movie that was basically just Saw. 
Weird data roof cycle. Didn't see but, it. Yeah. Don't know it. So that's why I went with with uh, yeah, soft. I think one. this one's pretty like out in the open. It's so funny as to why we would pick it because his entire intention is to like teach people a lesson and like be a bringer of justice, whether his perspective is correct or not, or his um, logic is logical or not to the average person like that is his his whole thing um i will say he's not always willing to see different perspectives he pretty much only has his perspective uh that's it he's actually very stubborn in that way but i think the other descriptors he, he's it. forcing other people to see different perspectives that so is true yeah that's why yeah. I, he says fits. i am only allowed i like my perspective is right but i will help you see multiple i'm like a real astrologist just fitting everything to what i want it to be you know Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love astrology, so I've been allowed to talk shit. Okay. okay. Well, you right. got anything else? No. This one? No, I got nothing on this one. Okay. We're going to move on to Scorpio. Scorpio is October 24th to November 21st. This one I struggle with, um, but description. Scorpios know what they want and aren't afraid to work hard and play the long game to get it. Loyal, ride, or die. If you're homies, they're loyal, ride, or die. If you're not homies, all bets are off, homies. Um, they are mysterious, intense, and deeply passionate people. Um, it's kind of the you either can't live with them or you want absolutely nothing to do with them. Uh, and so my pick was this year's oddity. A psychic medium attempts to uncover the truth behind her sister's murder at the site of the crime. And I saw her as being very Scorpio because she... Oh, by the way, we covered this movie. Go listen to it. Yes. <laughs> we covered Saw also with Twice the Terror. Yeah. That's a funny episode. I miss Twice the Terror. They are no longer podcasting right now, but definitely check out their past <laughs> episodes because they're funny as fuck. Okay. So, um, yeah, our main character is very Scorpio to me. She knows what she wants and she works hard to get it. She um basically like the plot is her, like we said, investigating um her sister's murder and trying to get punishment on the person that she finds responsible. And so the whole movie is very much like a long game to get that, to get him to meet his end and an end that or she it's a get him to meet the end that he deserves um, and like how she's able to manipulate and get there um, because she is so loyal and ride or die to her sister who's passed away. Um, like you don't see this kind of revenge plot unless you really cared about the person who's gone. Um, but she also is an incredibly mysterious and intense and passionate character and um, her whole like career um with like her oddity shop is very mysterious and she as a person is very intense to have a conversation with throughout the film um i think most of these characters want absolutely nothing to do with her but <laughs> it's a funny pick <laughs> yeah uh i really liked this movie and so i kind of thought it would be fun to shoehorn it in out. somewhere but i do think her as a character she actually really fits the descriptors there i see it so is it my turn yes all right i'm cheating a little bit because i've never actually seen this whole movie but i went with hellraiser for uh scorpio mm -hmm. and from i've seen parts of it and i know enough of it from for pop culture reasons and this is a big blind spot that i will be filling soon because mm -hmm. i'd like to watch the rest of it because everything i've seen i love but a uh, plot description is a woman discovers the newly resurrected, partially formed body of her brother-in-law and lover. She starts killing for him to revitalize his body and escape the demonic beings that are pursuing him after he escaped their underworld. This is just like not in any way what I ever thought Hellraiser was about based <laughs> off like the guy and like the poster dudes with Pinhead. He's, he's one of the demons. Yeah, he's not in it that, that oh, much. Oh, he's one of the demons. Pinhead is one of the, he's a, uh, well, I forget what they're called. He's one of the demons that comes and so basically Yeah, this, this guy, is a blind spot for me too, obviously. He gets as a whore. the box and he's looking for pleasures beyond our world because when you have already exhausted all the pleasures of our world, you go for something more, basically. And what these people believe in, the Cenobites, that's what they're called, is uh, extreme pain as pleasure. 
And it's like this. So he opens the box and they rip him apart with chains and trap him there. Mm -hmm. So what I've seen in this movie was like the first half and then I didn't get to watch the rest. So I'm kind of mad about it. So I got to go back. But it's on you, bro. She moves back into the house and her her husband's brother, who is also her lover that she's having an affair with, is in the house basically just like blood at this point. And she finds him there and is like, I got to bring him back because she's so passionate for him and like in love with him that she just goes around picking up men using her like her, I would say her Scorpioness and this to then bring them back and kill them so he can feed on their bodies and souls and blood to like reform. And so I was like, this girl is loyal, <laughs> absolutely ride or die to Frank because she's trying to bring back and she knows what she wants. Mm-hmm. Like it says, she's playing that long game by killing a bunch of people to get her her brother in law lover. We're gonna keep saying that she's cheating with yeah, the brother. I this hate is that. messed up. I hate that. Well, I mean, they're not they're mar- they're not married or they're related by uh, marriage law, lawyer. Only. Yeah, law lawyer by law. Lawyer. <laughs> they're married by lawyer. Um, and she's very like a, a sexual, very central character trying to like pull these men in just to murder them. And I was like, who's more Scorpio than that? According to that description, you know. Girl's confident. So I've kind of think I haven't seen the whole movie, but she seems like a feminist icon to me. Oh. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> watched a single minute of this movie. I was there when you watched it and I fell asleep on the floor. Uh so I have nothing to say or add. I can't really argue with your logic I, having not seen it. I can also say mysterious, intense, and deeply passionate fits the Cenobites, which is their whole thing is like going around and just doing like freaky, painful sex stuff. I'll take it. Or I don't even think it's sex stuff. I think it's just freaky, painful stuff stuff that that they get pleasure from. So I need to watch it. I want to cover it, actually. So someday. Okay. So we're going to move on to Sagittarius, Mm -hmm. November 22nd to December 21st. Sagittarius's were described as a dynamic blend of passion, curiosity, and intensity. Effortlessly magnetic, they easily attract friends and lovers with their innate humor. They're adaptable, flexible, born to explore, and thrill-seeking. Sagittariuses are notorious for their signature bluntness and their brutal honesty can often lead to misunderstandings, communication breakdowns, and lots of hurt feelings. We picked the same one for this one, didn't we? Yeah, because I think I talked about this too <laughs> when I was making my it was a good my post. I'm sorry. So you little thief. We cheated. We both have the descent. And I'll read the plot description. A caving expedition goes horribly wrong as the explorers become trapped and ultimately pursued by a strange breed of predators. So tell me what you think. I'll let you have the floor. Um, What made me go with this was very much the thrill-seeking, born-to-explore part uh, was where I first kind of came to me because they are, like, caving, which, like, no person who isn't, like, a thrill seeker honestly is going to be doing period um but they're even like going off the beaten path um which is particularly thrill seeking and a bad idea don't do that if there's a path stay on the path there's a <laughs> lot of reasons for that one so you don't get lost so you don't encounter the creatures that are here but also because there is like a reason for paths especially in national parks and state parks they exist for a reason to protect the vegetation yada 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 just don't do it but um they like they're so thrill seeking they're like fuck it off the beaten path but then because they end up in the situation that they're in they have to really adapt to their situation and be flexible and try new things and go different ways and like they have to get creative with what they're doing and learn like how to survive essentially where they are not that they survive but you know they have to try their hardest which involves a lot of adapting and flexibility i do think that our main character um and her friend whose fault it is that they go off um, on the, off the beaten track. I do think that they're both like very blunt, brutally honest people. Um, and that is why there is some conflict between them and between the one um, and other members of the group because of that. Um, I was going to jump in and say that... Uh yeah, the, the signature bluntness and brutal honesty is a big part of this movie. And I think that they kind of played on stereotypes of women by putting six women in this cave that are all kind of doing a little bit of a mean girl thing. I don't at the think same they time. all are. I think it's like- Some of them are. And there is like a, there definitely is a lot of misunderstanding and communication breakdowns 
And I would say like the the hurt feelings, like it fits all of all of that, at least between her and uh Juno. One of, Juno, one of the other characters. Yeah. The, the one that Well, I think Juno is the antagonist of the movie, like even more so than the, than the, than creatures, the Because I mean, she's the one who puts them in this situation for first of all, but she's also um spoiler for this old movie that you've probably seen already. Um, she ha- you know, was having an affair with our main character's husband before he passed away. So, yeah, I think there's a lot there. Did you have anything more to add? No, I think think you hit everything on that. I agree. It felt right. Okay. Just felt like an easy one. So, next. Next up, we're going Capricorn, December 22nd to January 19th. Capricorns... um, are dynamic individuals who express a unique balance of confidence and humility. They have a grounded, practical spirit that makes people feel comfortable in their presence. Capricorns have the ability to keep pushing forward even in the face of challenging adversity and painful strife. Capricorns are determined, hardworking, ambitious, and workaholics. So uh, our good friend Anna is a Capricorn, which is why I panicked and was like, I don't understand your sign at all. (laughs) Uh, and knowing that she was a Capricorn and thinking about certain aspects of her life versus this description, I picked uh, 2010's Black Swan. <laughs> That's a funny pick. <laughs> the like description, it. Nina is a talented but unstable ballerina on the verge of stardom. Pushed to the breaking point by her artistic director and seductive rival, Nina's grip on reality slips, plunging her into a waking nightmare. I think, like, Nina is such a Capricorn with the pushing forward, <laughs> determined, hardworking, ambitious, like that all describes her so well and why she ends up in the final role <laughs> that she has in the show. She is very, I think, humble, but obviously knows that she's talented, but knows that she has to work for it. So I do think that, that kind of captures that blend of confidence and humility really well. I think she is also, like, based off what we see about her qualities and her personality, she does kind of allow other people to be comfortable in her presence. But, yeah, I think it was the ability to keep pushing forward even in the face of challenging adversity that made me feel really inclined to pick this because I think that captures Nina so, so, so well. That's a good pick. I always forget to consider Black Swan as a horror movie. But there's some spooky stuff. It's like a psychological thriller. Fucking spooky. And I've heard people describe Mother as a horror movie, and I think this might be scarier to me. Well, I like it. You ready for mine? Yeah. Okay, I went with Alien, 1979. Okay. So, uh, description everyone's seen Alien, right? Except for you. It's one of my blind blind spots. I started and I fell asleep. It was very late. That's two that you've fallen asleep for now. All right, after investigating (laughs) a mysterious transmission of unknown origin, the crew of a commercial spacecraft encounters a deadly life form. So. I was latching on to the ability to keep pushing forward in the face of challenging adversity and painful strife because that's both Ripley, our main character, who probably should have just been like, I'm done with this. She did really wants to stay alive and does some crazy stuff to stay alive and continues to push through more adversity than anybody. No one has suffered more than Ripley, apparently, but it also fits our xenomorph who – you know, that thing is the ultimate killing life form has uh, basically just just keeps pushing through to finish its mission. Which Do they kill also entire have crew. a grounded practical spirit that makes other people feel comfortable in their presence? Other xenomorphs, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I also was looking at the like hardworking, ambitious workaholics because the whole situation here is that they're basically just deep space truckers, mm-hmm. as I always put it, that are. They're literally arguing over commission at the beginning and who's getting paid what. And I just think I, I felt like it fit. And I was really going with Ripley for the um, the idea of the adversity and like the, the determination. Uh, so that was making me giggle. So that's why I had to go with Alien for this one. Yeah, I would also say having not finished that film either i can't really comment but i know that that's a problem i know that's a blind spot and for when i did see before i fell asleep the imagery was stunning um i was really yeah. enjoying what i saw but of it xenomorph definitely a capricorn <laughs> oh my god i i don't agree actually i'm gonna put my <laughs> foot down there i know enough that i'm not gonna say that given that ripley the, though for sure ripley fits all those so we're I'll giving it to that. her sure 
Well, okay. I'm ready for the next one. The next okay. one's me. Matt is such a little freak. I am an Aquarius. Big time. But tell us about Aquarius. Aquarius. They are born between January 20th and February 18th. Aquariuses are confident, progressive, and innovative. Uh, they're also very rebellious, humanitarian. They have a reputation for being eccentric, unique, and bar- marching to the beat of their own drum, as well as being cold, aloof, and somewhat detached. So, I picked Inland Empire from 2006, written and directed by David Lynch. As an actress begins to adopt the persona of her character in a film, her world becomes nightmarish and surreal. I really wanted to pick something that was surreal for Aquarius. I thought that it hit the vibes really, really well. And I would not be surprised if David Lynch is Aquarius. I'm looking it up right now. (laughs) When was he born? I can't find it. It says he was born January 20th, That makes him Aquarius, yes. This is also Google AI and I don't trust it. So I'm trying Um, to figure it out. No, it was also on his Wikipedia page. That's so funny. (laughs) Yeah, so David Lynch is such an Aquarius. He's such an Aquarius. Aquarius. I was thinking that and I was like, he has to be an Aquarius, right? And I wanted to look it up before I spouted it. So that feels right to me. Everything I see him say feels very Aquarius. I think his films are so different than many other creators. I don't think there's anyone who does it quite the same way as David Lynch. Like he very much has his such a unique voice. And being that Aquariuses are so innovative and march to the beat of their own drum, they're very eccentric and unique. I think that fits very well for a David Lynch movie period. But especially Inland Empire I th- was kind of almost just going off vibes here because, frankly, like... You fell asleep during Inland Empire. <laughs> I watched the whole thing. But then I long. woke up and the friend we were watching it with was like, I know you missed a lot, but you also missed nothing. You wouldn't understand this movie any better had you been awake. And I felt good about that. So <laughs> I feel like I missed nothing. So, yeah, I feel like this movie is so innovative, but also so eccentric and unique and weird and surreal and... Ooh, it's a lot. So, so it felt like a really good fit to me. I'm happy you're considering Inland Empire a horror movie because I don't... Some people do. I probably wouldn't, but I'm I'm glad... I'm count it. Like, let's count it because that means we could cover it. Yeah, and I that's lo- true. I love Inland Empire. Very good movie. 2006. Did you give a plot description to this one? I, I was did. looking up. I was looking up David Lynch's birthday. Yeah, I know. So I got you weren't listening to any um, of what I said. No, no. I listened to everything you said about why you picked it. Mm, sure you I did. I heard all of that. I completely agree with you, though, in terms of any David Lynch movie could probably fall into Aquarius, which is why I also picked a David Lynch movie. Which one, But though? not Inland Empire. So I'm an Aquarius, so I was like, I got to pick something that I like and that mm-hmm. fits me. And to be honest, I have long said that David Lynch is the best horror director, but he's never actually directed a horror movie. Yeah. Inland Empire, we can count. Horror. The closest he's ever been to a horror movie, in my opinion, is what I picked, which was Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me. I do not agree with this pick at all. I got to pick another David Lynch movie. I got to pick a horror movie. But you I don't, don't agree. agree with this pick. So, but tell us why you First, it. I mean, it's basically about Laura Palmer's uh, final days until she is murdered. And mm-hmm. it follows it. So, Sim, to you, I was like, I need to pick something kind of surrealist and dreamlike to be an Aquarius movie. I think it's extremely innovative, progressive, and rebellious. Okay. All of those things, especially when you're coming from an ABC family. It wasn't ABC. It was CBS, whatever it was on. A TV show that was this like fun, charming, also scary, also haunting movie and basically remove all the fun from it, drop that act and just show it as the real scary thing it is. Um, I think that that was, again, very innovative and rebellious as, as David Lynch is. And we got to go to the humanitarian part. That's like a mm. whole big part of this entire series is about the violence that men perpetrate against women. Okay. And, and okay. cycles of abuse. And it's like, it's clear that what David Lynch's outlook is on the world and the empathy that I think he has for people and, and the ideas of like how we all can be better people and like what the, he, I, there's a big part of this show and his work in general that he believes there is like true good in the world. And the true good is, is empathy and the true love is empathy and the true evil in his mind is apathy. Mm-hmm. That is the purest form of evil, at least no, from what I take Has he said that or are you just interpreting it? I'm interpreting way. it from okay. all of his work. Okay. I think it's clear though in a lot of his work that okay. like the truest form is, is that. And I, I, like I said, he is very, 
I think his work is very humanitarian in that way. Um, and so like, how can you not say a movie like Twin Peaks Firewalk with me isn't this eccentric movie that again, we, I've said before it's progressive, but you wrote March to the beat of their own drum. That's another thing this movie does by basically separating itself from those first two seasons by not being, yeah, okay. this movie yeah. got booed at con cons. How do you say it? The con. film festival. It got booed because people were so mad that he didn't do the fun, charming, funny thing that the show did. And because he had to just strip away like that to, to make his point about this evil thing that happened mm-hmm. and this horrible thing. And this good person that was at the center of it and Laura Palmer, who protected like those around her. And I just, I, I love this movie. It's really good. And it felt that it felt that David Lynch in, in general, as you said, is very Aquarius. And so I had to pick one of his movies and this, this was what I said. I thought the only horror movie he had was so. I can, based off your description, I can buy into why you picked it, but it's just not what I would have picked as my first or second David Lynch well, it's, movie. It's not funny, right? Like, as I said, it's not, and I think sometimes we think Aquarius is like no, aloof or like kind of goofy in some ways, but like it is, right? It is, it does still has that like goofiness of Lynch, goofiness of Twin Peaks. It's just much more harrowing. Yeah, I just I still wouldn't have no, picked I it. I, 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 can, lo- I, I thought can it was a great pick. Into your rationale a little bit, I think you picked this because you're obsessed with it, not because. Well, it no, fit 100%. that was a good pick. I, I felt like well, the I felt like you shoehorned it in because you. Oh, wanted I just dis- I completely it. disagree, but I, I actually will like it. Agree, you explained it well, but ha- having seen it, I will argue that my pick of Inland Empire fits the vibes Fine. of an Aquarius better. Okay. The fine. vibes as an entity. I thought you were going to pick um, I Saw the TV Glow. But the thing about I Saw the TV Glow is it's just as harrowing in some ways as as, as uh, Fire Walk With Me. So. I do quite like I Saw the TV Glow. As a pick so for Aquarius? I did, not necessarily as a pick for Aquarius. I did try and fit it in somewhere. I so. think I would have to have picked another... Like it really, it really, I think Aquarius has to be some kind of surrealist movie. I agree and, with and that. I, and I do kind of think that Aquarius is probably going to be a hard one to fit because a lot of surrealist horror movies are like this. They are like pretty upsetting. I was surprised that you did not pick Climax for Aquarius because I I know you picked it for Pisces because I see it on your screen. (laughs) Spoilers. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) I thought you would pick that for Aquarius because I think the film style, like I think this movie that movie is very progressive and unique and eccentric. The way it's shot, the like dance sequences, the characters, I think all of it, um, the vibes are just very Aquarius to me with how unique the film itself is. But as we said, I like my pick. I wasn't trying to shoehorn. I promise. Okay. I, I really but felt as that we it fit. said, climax 2018. That's what you I picked. Did pick I it. picked for my Pisces. So go ahead and read Pisces. I could talk about Twin Peaks Firewalk with me all day. Pisces is February 19th to March 20th. Kind and gentle, they're invigorated by shared experiences of room, mood, I can't talk, of music, music and, romance. and romance. Dreamy nature, deep apathy, and artistic flair, imaginative and intuitive abilities. So I have a climax for this one, and the plot summary is French dancers gather in a remote, empty school building to rehearse on a wintry night. The all-night celebration morphs into a hallucinatory nightmare when they learn their sangria is laced with LSD. And we have not covered this movie, or have we? We talked about it for Movie Rec Monday when we, we never were still covered doing it. that. We're going to cover it at some point. Um, it's great. Very, very oh, good we, movie. We also talked about it on our A24, A24 bracket. Yeah. So this movie has gotten some mentions, but not a full episode. This will be the third episode we've talked about so it on. I do think this at could least. fit Aquarius as well, but I got drawn into the invigorated by shared experience of music and romance because there is a lot of that. Yeah. In this. This, is, this is a movie... And I think it's less about the plot of the movie and more about the style of the movie that fits this. I mm-hmm. think that uh, Gaspar Noe directed it, has an insane amount of artistic flair, and it fits that yes. kind of dreamy nature. Again, I actually think a lot of Lynch movies can maybe fall into Pisces as well, especially talking about dreamy nature. Uh, but as a movie itself, it's so creative mm-hmm. and out there and different. And it is, again, about a shared experience of music. That and then that's a huge part of it. Music like plays such a vital part in this movie that uh, I felt like Pisces had to be picked again. I think it's more about the style of the movie than it is the actual content. But this movie is all style. Well, that's the why I think it is incredibly Aquarius. 
Aquarius and Pisces are kind of similar, though. No, I think they they're are, similar. No. When I read these descriptions, no, I feel like they're kind of similar. I don't see them as similar. Okay. I think Pisces is most similar to Cancer. Oh, interesting. Well, do you like my pick of Climax or do you feel weird about that one? I thought it made sense, but... I like my pick better. All right, well, let's do But I am then. biased because it is my pick. So... I picked I Saw the TV Glow. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, I'm telling you, uh, these movies so. these movies on Aquarius and Pisces feel very similar. Um, but I picked it for very different reasons uh, than why you described picking Climax, even okay. though I can understand why you would say they're similar. Um, I Saw the TV Glow is about a teenager trying to survive life in the suburbs when a classmate introduces him to a mysterious late night television show. That is the most... It's the worst <laughs> description ever for that movie. We talk about it in an episode. Um, it's the it's the best movie that came out in 2024 so far. Is, not not just the best horror movie. It's the best movie that came out. In it's absolutely stunning. In my opinion, um, for a lot of reasons, both with how it looks, how it's filmed, but also the performances, the writing. I think this movie has such an artistic flair, like you were saying about climax, that. I don't see in a lot of films. I do think this film was inspired by a lot of the surrealist nature of David Lynch. So again, I can understand why you would kind of like conflate a David Lynch movie or a climax, which I saw similarly to a David Lynch movie. I can see how you would conflate that with Pisces or Aquarius. But why I climax this- is like a David Lynch movie, but without you being in on the dreamy stuff. It's like. Because in all of his, you're kind of pulled into the night, not nightmare. His all dreams. You're pulled in and you're kind of confused. This, you're seeing other people in the dream and you're just watching them react, which is like, it's kind of like a different perspective. I just need to say that before you I would like to discuss my movie. I saw the TV glow and I do think that there is like so many dreamy elements to this in the way that it is shot and in the, the plot, which feels like it's not grounded in reality, but then it is like most true to life compared to a lot of movies that I've seen this year, interestingly enough. The primary characters, it's really about them being intuitive to each other's feelings and experiences um, and learning about what they might have in common or who they really are on the inside. And they get closer because of their shared experiences, not necessarily of music and romance, but of TV, film. And I do think this movie, funny enough, has a lot of really unique and fun music throughout the film. I think our main character is extremely kind and gentle and inherently very imaginative to enjoy the type of media that they enjoy as well as do i i think the movie itself is very imaginative and dreamy and demonstrates a deep apathy towards lgbt empathy that's what i meant (laughs) opposite not apathy that would be bad no especially in this movie yeah Yeah. no a deep empathy (gasps) towards uh, the LGBTQ community and anyone really who is struggling with their <laughs> identity and where they fit into the world. Sorry, Norton doesn't like what you're saying. He doesn't like your apathy. Yeah. Apparently, he started barking. I was, <laughs> he is correct. That's not what I meant to say. Uh, so you're fine. I, I really like your pick for this one. I like yours better than mine. Thank I, you. I thought Climax was good for this, but this was good. I might have been getting a little uh, tired by the end. This was the last one I did. So mm, this was of one of power. the first ones I came up with good. because it felt. I think. Very. I, I really fell into the shared experiences in music. And then I also thought about like people talking about acid being something to allow deep empathy, whether it's good or bad, which That's I find fair. in this Interest- movie as well. well. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and I think it kind of puts you in the shoes to have empathy for the characters, which is where I went. But I, I like I really agree with you. This movie is wonderful. I think it's a good pick. So Yeah, we work. talk in our episode a lot about the themes and purpose of this movie and uh, that would be a great place to hear more about yes. essentially why this is a wonderful it's movie. utterly Pisces. I, I would honestly love, I would like to talk about it again because I think like in retrospect, there's even more that we could say. So. I think this is a movie you will hear us bring up multiple times on the podcast. Similar and to Fire Walk With Me. You, oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that one more time. Honestly, I've heard about it too much. You will hear us mention I Saw the TV Glow at least one more time by the end of the year because we will be doing like a favorites of the year episode towards the end, probably yep. our last episode of the year. So stay tuned to find out where we would put that among our favorites of the year. Well, spoiler, and that, it's high. And that is it. That's all of our signs. So I thought we had some good picks. 
throughout. Definitely and I think it was funny when we had some uh, some crossovers. Overlap. Yeah. I'm going to laugh really hard if that's the overlap ones are the ones that people comment like, you we do disagree. not understand my sign at all. Well, I want to see, <laughs> I, people got to come argue with you or me about my Aquarius pick because I felt good about it and I was accused of I'm shoehorning, sorry. which is yeah. messed up. I really want to hear how people feel about our Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Sagittarius. Aquarius. Aquarius mm-hmm. picks um, specifically because that is where we either had some disagreement or I just wasn't as confident in my pick. So definitely comment. I, we say this every time we want to hear your thoughts, but this one especially we would like discussion and we would we are open to beef if you need to beef with us. But for now, that is That's the it. Zodiac We're Signs of Horror Movies. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, before we go, I did want to share what we did for Halloween for our Halloween party. <laughs> I- <laughs> you put this right at the end? I do believe that we had discussed this um, on another episode of the podcast, like what our theme was. But if we didn't, our theme was Robert Pattinson characters, which is so fun. I went as his character in Good Time. That was mine. And Hannah went as Bella. I was Bella. Um, I had the worst experience ever trying to put in contacts for the first time. I put them in for her. Yes, he did. Um, it was quite the journey putting in the contacts, but I thought they were so fun. We had the costumes we had, though. So we had you. We had Alice, Colin. Yes. We had a hot dog from Robert Pattinson short film. Robert Pattinson Tintet desperately needs, needs a New, a New York, York City, City hot, hot dog. dog. <laughs> then uh, we had Batman. We had two Batmans. We had the King. Yeah, we had the King. We had the Heron. We had two Cedric Diggory's. Yeah, we had the Heron. Someone dressed up the Her- as the Heron. That was great. We had the lighthouse, lighthouse, two characters from the lighthouse. Yes. Um, our son, our dog, uh, was the like the a little, monster. Yeah, we had him a little squid monster from the lighthouse. He's such an angel being. So I he was him. the lighthouse. And was that it? Am I missing someone? No. We had a knife. Preston was a knife. That's not um that's not on theme. Oh, we had an Edward Cullen, but I think I was a little half staff. Oh, yeah. Half ass. Nope. Half ass. Yep. Jeez Louise. It's what I get for insulting him, I guess. Just <laughs> stuttering. Yeah, Ian, I hope you listen to this. I thought your costume was a little lazy, but I liked that I had someone to pose with, with my uh, <laughs> daughter, Renesme. And I'm afraid we're missing someone, so if we missed you, shout out. Sorry. We still loved your costume. Because <laughs> if, 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 if we missed you. Oh, we you. still liked it. I thought you said you, we still have your costume. I was like, we do? No, we have the knife <laughs> costume. The non-Robert Pattinson costume is what got left behind. But All yeah, right. uh, I think that describes us very, very well. And I feel like that is a deeply Aquarius costume pick, to be fair. It just feels really eccentric and weird. <laughs> so it all ties all right. back in. Happy Halloween, everyone. Check and it. see you later. We are excited to talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to Horror Hour with the Hannahs. Make sure to listen to future episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or wherever you can find podcasts. You can follow us at Horror Hour with the Hannahs on TikTok and Instagram for more content. If you like the podcast, please follow and leave a review on your favorite podcasting app. Happy hauntings! Happy hauntings!